Hello and welcome to Grafana Plugins webinar. With Grafana 7.0, we are introducing a new plugins platform for plugin developers. I'm super happy to share the details of the platform with you. My name is Dominic and I'm a software engineer at Grafana Labs. Just for your information, this webinar is being recorded and you will get the recording after it ended. Also, the Q&A session is going to take place right after this webinar, so feel free to join if you have any questions about Grafana plugins. The Q&A session will be on slack.grafana.com on the Grafana Online channel. So let's take a look at the agenda for this uh, webinar. I'm going to start with some quick overview of how Grafana plugins development looked like before Grafana 7.0 was released. After that, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Grafana Toolkit, a new CLI that we are introducing to streamline the development experience when working on Grafana plugins. After that, it's time for Grafana Data and Grafana Runtime Overview, two new packages that we are introducing to allow you to easily integrate with the Grafana data models, use the utilities or runtime services. This is going to be an introduction to Declarative Options API, which is a new thing for plugin developers in Grafana 7.0. This, is, this API allows you to easily create panel editors or field options editors without the need to touching any of the UI code. And last but not least, I'm, I'm going to give you an update on the state of Grafana UI, which is evolving into Grafana design system. So let's start with this. Simple and probably obvious statement that Grafana loves plugin developers. Yeah, we love you guys and the amount of variety and, and variety of the plugins that you are creating just can't stop surprising us. Personally, when I joined Grafana over a year ago, I was surprised by how much perseverance and, and at the same time love for Grafana you guys must have in order to develop plugins without any or without much help from the documentation uh, or tutorials, etc. So you spend a lot of time reverse engineering Grafana, looking at other plugins code in order to understand how to build a plugin. There was a lot of hacks out there, lots of code that was far from easy to understand, yet the plugin community was very active and, and the quality of the plugins was surprisingly high. And this was one of the reasons why I was eager to work on the new plugins platform. But before jumping on the news about the platform itself, let's take a look at how Grafana plugins development looked like before and how plugins were uh, brought to Grafana. So Grafana introduced plugin support in version 3.0 and since then the va a vast amount of custom panels and data sources integrations were created. Plugins are the best way to customize Grafana to your needs, way beyond what Grafana has to offer out of the box. They allow creating custom visualizations, custom plugins, custom panel plugins, that are not built into, into Grafana and also integrate with the data sources of your choice. And we believe that this fits perfectly into our vision of Grafana being the open observability platform. Basically a platform where every data source, every piece of your observability stack can mix. And of course we cannot support every database out there or every visualization that you dream about, but with the plugins platform, platform is actually in your hands to implement whatever integration you need or whatever visual, visualization you might need. To show you how powerful plugins are and when, what you can achieve using the plugins platform, I'm going to show you a couple of examples. On the left hand side you have flowcharting plugin. It's a fairly new plugin introduced a couple of months ago and it was developed by Ono. Onot was one of the very, very first uh, adopters of Grafana Toolkit, which I'm going to talk about uh, soon. And the goal of this plugin is basically to allow you integrating your draw-io diagrams into Grafana as panels. So a very simple concept, but very powerful at the same time. And the amount of options that you have using this, op using this panel is just amazing. 
So this is a visualization plugin. It allows you to have a custom panel within a Grafana dashboard. But plugins are not only about the visualization. Plugin are, plugins are also about the data sources. And there are data sources that we do not support out of the box in Grafana. And in, one of such data sources is Google BigQuery. And there is a community plugin out there for Google, Google BigQuery that you can use and basically query data from Google's BigQuery data source. Moreover, there are more simpler, I would say, data sources out there, also community data sources, that allow you to have not so obvious integrations, like for instance, this one, a Strava data source that allows you to bring your Strava training data into Grafana and visualize it via Grafana dashboard. So as you can see, Grafana plugins are super, super, super powerful. But with Grafana 7.0, we are introducing even more powerful plugins. We call them Grafana backend data source plugins. Grafana supported those, but with Grafana 7.0, we are adding an official support for the, this kind of plugins. And thanks to the data, backend data source plugins, you will be able to take your integrations to a next level. Like for instance, enabling alerting or custom authentication for your data sources. So you might already know that plugins are very, very powerful, but at the same time, we internally at Grafana felt, and as well, we, we got some input from the community that they feel somehow broken. The effort and the complexity that you need to develop in order to get up to speed was basically too much. Lack of examples or deep dive documentation, all of these factors make them not as great as we would like them to be. We would like to, we, Grafana and, and plugins community, would like to would like the plugins to be super easy to scaffold, to develop, to test and plug in, to test and build them, to kind of not think about the configuration that you need to prepare in order to, to start working on your plugin, to not reinvent the wheel anymore. And easy access to some of the runtime services and the data utilities was also something very important for both plugin developers and us internally. And last but not least, a clean APIs and a set of solid components, UI components, that you can build your UIs from in your Grafana plugins. So that's why with Grafana 6.0, we have released a very, very early alpha version of Grafana UI. Since then, Grafana UI changed a bit. And what Grafana UI was, was basically a set of uh, components, a components library that we use internally at Grafana to build the user interface of Grafana. It was, its purpose was to make the work of plugin developers easier in terms of building the user interfaces and also to enable user, interface, user experiences that are aligned with the Grafana design language. I must admit that be between Grafana 6 and Grafana 7, we stalled a bit with Grafana UI but it doesn't mean that it went out of our focus completely. We noticed that people who want to develop plugin, they were actually asking a very fundamental questions. And the questions were not about the UI. They were asking questions like how to create a plugin for Grafana or what webpack templates should I use to, to start my plugin development? Or is there any template out there that I can use to have a ready-to-go plugin. And there were tools like that out there. For instance, the Core Glory's Grafana plugin template webpack, which allowed you to quickly start developing the plugin. But we felt like this is not necessarily, one, this is not 100% what we want. We have seen loads of plugins with custom webpack configurations with no conventions and we, even internally, we didn't have a convention on how to structure our webpack configurations for the plugins. And this made the plugins hard to maintain, but when it comes to the community plugins, it also made, us, made, it, hard to re, made it hard for us to review those plugins, those, those kind of plugins. So we decided to work on Grafana Toolkit. And Grafana Toolkit 
is trying to solve the more the most fundamental problems that people were struggling with when trying to develop Grafana plugin. Toolkit basically is a CLI that streamlines the workflow around plugins development. It comes with plugin scaffolding, so we don't have to worry about setting up your directory structures, your webpack configurations, your entire build pipeline, etc. It comes with a common configurations to develop, test, and build plugins. And to achieve that, we use the set of tooling that's shown on the slide. For building, we use Webpack together with, to, with TypeScript. For testing, we use Jest and Enzyme. And the styling support comes out of the box. You can use SAS, LESS, CSS, or Emotion. It also supports legacy plugins, and by legacy, I mean Angular but you might expect some rough edges there. And also it supports JavaScript, but since we developed Grafana in TypeScript, we believe that the TypeScript is the best and the most efficient way to build plugins for Grafana. Let's have a look how to use Grafana Toolkit to actually easily scaffold a plugin and quickly iterate over it. Let me switch my window to terminal for a second. So Grafana, as I mentioned before, Grafana Toolkit comes as an NPM package, so you can use it as an NPX, uh, using the NPX command. So in order to create a new plugin, you need to type NPX add Grafana slash toolkit, sorry, plugin colon create, and then you type the name of your, of your plugin. I'm going to name it Toolkit demo. Right now, NPM will fetch the Grafana toolkit and execute the plugin create task in order to allow you to scaffold the plugin. And you can choose whether it's a panel plugin, data source plugin, or, or data source with backend plugin. Please be patient. It can take a while. Uh, it kind of depends on your internet connection. There are plenty of dependencies that NPM needs to fetch, but it should be fairly, uh, fairly fast. So when the NPX finishes fetching Grafana Toolkit, it executes the plugin create task. And the first thing that you need to decide is what kind of plugin you want to develop. Do you have panel plugin, data source plugin, and backend data source plugin templates available? The panel plugin allows you to create a panel for Grafana dashboards, basically a visualization. The data source plugin allows you to integrate with some uh, databases, basically. And the backend data source plugin allows you to add a backend component to the data source plugin, meaning that you can enable things like alerting or custom authentication. But for this demo, I'm going to use the panel plugin. So from this list, I select the panel plugin. Grafana Toolkit will fetch a template from GitHub, so, we, so you are sure that it's always up to date. You need to specify the plugin name. It automatically prefills this field based on what you have provided using the plugin create command, then you need to enter the organization. It's all basically a plugin metadata that you need to enter. Some description, this is optional. Some keywords, optional as well. Choose the author. It's going to fetch the information based on your GitHub, on your Git config, on your local Git config, the URL of your organization, and then finally it's going to print you the details that you have just entered. If everything has done well and you are fine with that, you just press yes and enter and your plugin is ready to go, almost. The next thing, thing that you need to do is to install the dependencies. So you go to the newly created panel plugin directory and you run yarn install command. This will basically install all the dependencies that are added to the simple panel plugin. Again, it's going to go to NPM registry, fetch the necessary, necessary dependencies, and pretty much that's it. OK, so let's take a look at the directory structure that Grafana Toolkit has created. As you can see, it's fairly 
simple structure, cl pr pretty classic for uh, for uh, JavaScript based or TypeScript based project. But the most interesting part that I want to show you is the package JSON file. So package JSON package .json file consists of a couple of it, it contains a couple of scripts that utilize Grafana tools. Those scripts are build, test, dev, and watch. The dev task and the watch task are the ones that you use during development. The dev task will create a development build of your plugin, while watch task will create the same kind of build, but with the file watcher enabled. So anytime you make any changes to your plugin, the Grafana toolkit will basically rebuild it and you will and, and, and you will be able to immediately immediately see the changes in Grafana. Plugin test uh, test task will basically perform the jest test that you implement, some prettier checks and linking. And the last script called build will basically prepare your plugin for production. So to show you the plugin, the simple plugin that we have just created, I'm gonna run the yarn watch task. As I mentioned, it's gonna start the watching server that's gonna see, look for the changes that you made to your plugin, and you can easily go to Grafana and see how the plugin looks like. So let's run yarn watch. Yarn watch will execute uh, webpack, compile your code, perform the type checking, and if no errors are found, you are ready to go. So let's switch to Chrome for a second to see the newly created plugin. Actually, I'm gonna remove this one because it's for the later part of the presentation. Okay, I'm gonna refresh my Grafana and try to add a new panel. And as you may remember, the, pla the, pa the panel plugin name that I've just created is called Toolkit Demo. So let's look for the toolkit demo plugin. It's available in the visualizations list, so that's a good sign. Let's take a look if it works. Yes, it does. It doesn't do much. It, sim it simply renders a circle. This is just an example plugin, nothing super fancy, but it gives you a, an or a, a quick starting. It's a start. It's a quick starting point for you to actually start developing the plugin. You, as you can see, you didn't have to do any configuration. The plugin is ready to play with and, and to to actually work on. This particular simple plugin has some display options, so you can specify. So you can modify the the text that is displayed there. It has changed here. You can also show the series counter, which will show the number of series returned by your query, and you can control the size of the, of the text that displays the number of series. So as you can see, starting a plugin development with Grafana Toolkit is now super easy. This, this is available for you starting from now, and you can just go to npm and run npx Grafana Toolkit plugin create task to create your own plugin. Let's get back to the slides. So the major advantage of Grafana Toolkit, in our opinion, is that it actually allows you to focus on the what really matters when working on the plugin. And we think that what really matters there is the value that you bring to the community, the value that your plugin brings to the community. In Grafana 7.0, we spent quite a lot of time working on the underlying data model of Grafana. I'm not gonna deep dive into the APIs that I'm into the APIs of the two libraries that I'm just that, that I'm gonna present to you, but I just want to know I want you to know that that we are also introducing those two libraries, Grafana Data, which is focused on Grafana data models and data utilities. Uh, for instance, the panel plugin or data source plugin uh, interfaces or classes live in Grafana data. So when you create a plugin, you basically import those interfaces from Grafana data. And there is also another package called Grafana Runtime. And Grafana Runtime gives you an access to Grafana's runtime interfaces and, or runtime services. And one of such services is Angular Loader. Uh, Angular Loader. 
and I'm talking about angular loader not without a reason here uh, probably some of you already asked themselves a question is Grafana 7.0 going to support angular plugins and the answer is yes we are still going to support angular panels and, 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 and angular plugins in general currently we don't have plans on deprecating those but of course there will be a time in the future that we're going to deprecate angular plugins but for now we are just not recommending using angular for plugins development anymore the recommended way is to use react and the newly introduced grafana platform so all the grafana data utilities core types uh, and, and runtime services are now available thanks to grafana data and Grafana runtime packages. If you wanna learn more about those two packages and what the APIs of those are, feel free to go to the API reference that we have created for you. It's available on the docs site, grafana.com slash docs in the section developers and then API reference. All of the interfaces are described there, uh, documented there. We are like saying all it's a little bit too much. We are working on documenting all of them, but uh, this is an ongoing process. It's going to take a while to, to document the most, the majority of those. But the core one, the most important ones, are documented for you, so you can deep, dig deeper and, and see what's out there in those packages. So with these two new pack with these new packages grafana data and grafana runtime we are also introducing something what we call a declarative options api this this api gives you an access an easy way to create the data options editors and the field options and the panel options editors for every single plugin you don't have to worry about implementing any react components anymore it's just a matter of using a simple API. For those of you who have seen Total Grafana 7.0 over, overview, or maybe tried Grafana 7.0 already, you might be already familiar with the new panel editor and the field option configuration UI. For those who didn't, let me quickly show you what I am talking about. So with Grafana 7.0, we have completely redesigned the panel edit experience if you go to the panel edit of this particular table you can see that on the right hand side there are all the options that are related to the panel in the panel tab you have the display options of the panel like for instance in terms of table panel the display option the only display option that's available out there is the show and hide header so you can basically configure whether your visualization contains some element or it doesn't. But we have also added these two new tabs here. One is called Field and the other one is Override. Those two tabs allows you to have a very granular control over the data that you are showing in your visualization. So looking at this particular table, as you can see, it displays like three time series, a temperature, humidity and pressure changes over time. So you can take a look, so, so, so you can config, configure, for instance, uh, a unit thanks to the field option. So let's say that you want to display the temperature in Celsius. So with the new field options, you can actually do that without any, uh, any special effort. You basically go to the standard options of the field config and you select the unit that you want to use for a particular uh, part of your data. So let's say that I'm going to use Celsius. And there you go. The data is displayed in Celsius. So field options apply to all of the data that you are displaying in your visualization. But in this case, it doesn't really ma make much sense because you don't express humidity or pressure in Celsius degrees, right? And this is where overrides comes in. With the override system, you can easily target only a specific slices of your result set and apply the field configuration only to those specific parts. So let's say that I want to configure the unit of humidity. I can add an override. 
select a name, a particular field from my results that I want to configure the field options for, it's going to be humidity. I can add an override property, and in this case, I'm going to override the unit property, and basically choose a unit that I want to use for humidity, and I'm going to use percentages. And there we go, the temperature has Celsius, but humidity has percentages. And we, can, and, and we can use the same functionality to actually adjust the unit of pressure column. We just add another override, we select the pressure field this time, we add a unit override, and we choose hectopascal. And there we go. So these are the field options and the field override. With field options, you can configure the data display options of your visualization, while, while with the overrides, you get a fine grade control over the different slices of your, of your data set. Let's get back to the presentation. So the declarative options API is basically aimed to allow you quickly iterate and, and, and quickly create the panel editors. And the panel editors are, and when I'm talking about the panel editors, I'm talking both the display option editors and the field option editors. So let's take a look how to use this API. I'm gonna switch to Visual Studio Code for a bit. What you can see here is a very simple uh, panel plugin definition that I've created using Toolkit. So I can use the yarn watch command to actually take a look, to actually develop and work on this plugin. So let's see how, how does this plugin look like in Grafana. I'm gonna run the yarn watch command, wait for it to complete. It compiled the sources, no type errors found, so we are good to go to Grafana and see how this plugin, how does this plugin work. Let's go back over here. I'm gonna save the previous changes. And I'm gonna refresh this dashboard. Okay, let's reorganize this a bit. And let's add a new panel. I have already configured Grafana to actually use the plugin from the directory when I have created it. But if, you, if you're gonna do the same thing on your computer, remember to read the Grafana documentation and see how to make Grafana use the plugin that you are creating. But let's see how this simple plugin looks like. I'm gonna start with changing my data source to a plugin data source, plugin demo data source that I've created before. And I'm gonna go to the visualization setting and select the plugin demo plugin. And this is the plugin. Again, it only shows dots with some numbers, some some numbers that I have crafted for, for this demo, but in order to see what this, what this data is, I'm gonna use the inspect feature that we have introduced in Grafana 7.0 as well. And using this feature, you can see the raw data that, were, that was passed to the panel. And as you can see, this is pretty much the same data that I've shown you in the previous example. It's, it shows you temperature, humidity, and pressure over time. But what you can see in the, in the editor uh, of this panel is that there is no display options. And that's because I haven't configured any display options for, uh, for this panel. So let's say that you want to be able to change the font face of the, uh, of the values displayed within the circle. And with the declarative options API, that's actually super simple. Let's get back to Visual Studio Code. The panel plugin class comes with a new method called set panel options. This set panel, panel options accepts a, a callback function that, and that callback function, it takes a, an argument called, we call it builder, 
and this builder actually exposes the declarative options API that we're gonna use. So let's take a look at this API. As you can see, it consists of a couple of methods that allow you to add a very simple UI element, a basic UI element that you might want to use in your panel editor, like Boolean switches, color pickers, radio buttons, selects, etc. So for a matter of this, uh, of this demo, I want to create a three options, basically. A single option that will, not three, but sing, a single option that will allow the user to customize the font face of the, uh, of the values displayed within a shape. So I'm gonna, for this pur purpose, I'm gonna use a radio button. So I'm gonna use add radio method. And now the radio, add radio method, it accepts uh, a very simple object with a couple of properties. The first property that you want to configure is called path. What path is, is actually a path within the object that represents the shape of your options. In this particular example, the name of this object is simple option. So let's take a look what it, what, how is it built. It consists of four options. Text, show series count, series count size, and font face, which is interesting for us. So the font face accepts a type that, that can be represented by one of the three values. It's either monospace, serif, or sans serif. So, so this is a great candidate for radio button. But what is the path? Path is just the name of this property. So we're gonna use the font face as the path name of, uh, of this radio button. The next thing that you wanna configure is the name of this property. And this is the human readable name, basically. It's gonna be displayed in the UI as your UI element label. So I'm gonna call it font face. Next up is the description. Description is optional. You can provide it or not. Uh, and it's gonna be rendered in the UI as a hint for the user. So we can explain that, hey, choose a font face for the values. Or values. And last thing that you want to configure here are the settings, a settings of this option. In the case of radio button, the settings object is basically an options that is an array of available options to choose from. And let me go to my snippets to, uh, sorry, to copy the options that I have prepared before. So I'm gonna, gonna copy those three options and I'm gonna save. Grafana Toolkit has compiled the code. It's gonna type check it. And now when we go to the panel editor, we, we already should have the options editor for this particular panel, for this particular option. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is the panel that, I add, that I've added before, so let me change the changes, let me save the changes. Okay, and let's refresh this edit mode. And there we go. On the right hand side pane, you have the display options now available with the font face name, choose a font face for values description that you have provided, and the three different options that you have specified. So I can now easily change the font face of the, displayed of the displayed value to be monospace or serif or the default one, the sans serif. And you can, as you could see in this demo, I, I'm gonna refresh it so you see, by default any of the options, no, 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 no of the options is selected, but we can go back to code and actually say what option is the default one. And you can do that by specifying the default value property. And let's make it a monospace. And go back to Chrome. Okay, let me refresh. And there we go. Now the default value is set to monospace. So this is the declarative options for uh, panel options, for the panel display option. The declarative options API for the panel display options. It's very simple, you don't have to write any single line of UI code 
we simply use the set panel options method available on the panel plugin class and pretty much that's it. And you can create multiple different options uh, using the API that we are providing. And one last thing about this API that you can also add your own custom editor. If any of the editors that you are providing by default doesn't fit your needs, you can implement your own React editor and specify it using the add custom editor option over here. Let's go back to Chrome for one more sec and I'm gonna talk about the declarative options API for the field option setting. So as you can see in the right side pane, there is no field and override options available. And this is because we, we haven't set for the plugin to use the field config option. So let's enable the field configuration for this particular panel. So enabling the field configuration for, uh, for the uh, panel plugin is very, is very simple. You just use the use, oh, sorry, wrong. I think I have a typo somewhere here. Okay, yeah, that is uh, a wrong parenthesis. So how to enable the field configuration for, for your plugin? It's super simple. You just use the use field config method. And the use field config method automatically hooks you into the field overrides data pay pipeline of Grafana. So let's save this and go back to Chrome. Let's refresh this panel. And as you can see, the field options and the override options are now available for your plugin. No coding at all, just a matter of simple line of code. Use field options. And now you can configure the units, for instance. The same, pretty much the same thing that we did previously with the table panel. I can say that the unit that I want to display my data with is Celsius. And there you go. It's displayed, the values are displayed with Celsius degrees. And I can create overrides for, for those field options. I can create overrides for the humidity and use percentage as, as the unit. And I can also create the override for the pressure and use the unit hectopascal. And it's all supported out of the box, all available out of the box without any need for implementation. Just a matter of using use field, config, use field options method on the panel plugin interface. But this is not the coolest thing uh, about the declarative options. Actually, the, the coolest thing in my opinion about the declarative options is that you can specify, you can implement your own custom field options. And to show you how to do that, let's switch back to Visual Studio Code. So the use field config method, it actually accepts an object as an argument. And this is the interface of this object. It accepts the standard options, standard options default, and the use custom config. And for this example, I'm gonna use the use custom config uh, option that I'm gonna specify. To make things easy, we actually implemented this in, uh, in pretty much the same manner as we implemented the declarative options for, for the panel option. So you're gonna use exactly the same API. So use custom config takes a function as an argument. And this function exposes a builder, which is the actual declarative options API builder that you can use to configure your custom config uh, for your field options of your panel. So let's say, I'm gonna switch back to Chrome for a sec. Let's say that you want to differentiate the shape depending on what does the value display. So it's gonna be a circle for the temperature, it's gonna be, let's say, a square for the humidity, and a triangle for, for pressure. So how to do that? Let's create another radio button, but this time for the field option. So as I mentioned, the builder, it has exactly the same API as the panel options have. So I'm gonna use the builder.addRadio and use pretty much the same convention. 
first I'm going to specify the path, but this time the path is going to be a, a path within a different object. So if you scroll up over here, the panel plugin generic class, it now accepts two properties compared to the previous version of this API. Previously, it only accepted the options, the panel options uh, interface, but now it also accepts the second argument. And the second argument, it describes the shape of your field configuration, of your field options. So let's take a look at the demo field config that I have prepared previously, before. It has a very simple interface. It has only a single property that can be either a triangle, a circle, or a square. And we're gonna configure a radio button for this property. So as a path, we're gonna use shape path from within this uh, interface. So I'm gonna use the shape path. And again, I'm gonna use uh, a name property to specify the label of the, of the option in the UI. It's gonna be called shape. I'm gonna specify the description and the description gonna be, let's say, choose a shape. And the options, the available options. So again, settings, view object, and let's specify the available options. And I'm gonna refer to my snippets one more time because I have prepared the options already. There we go. So I can choose from so I can choose from triangle, circle, or square option. And last but not least, let's give it, let's give it uh, a default value. Let it be uh, square, let's say. Okay, going back to Chrome. I'm gonna save the field override that I just created, okay? And what I would expect now to happen is that instead of circles, we're gonna see squares because that's the default value that I've set for this uh, configuration. And there we go. By default, we see squares now. And as you can see, in the field tab, we have a new section available, which is called a custom options. And the custom options is basically the options that you, that you have uh, just, that we have just specified. So I can choose between triangle, shape, or square. So let, as I mentioned before, we wanted the temperature to be rendered as a circle, so let's use the circle as the default shape. And this is the funniest thing, the most interesting thing for me, that you can actually create overrides for those custom options that you have just created. I can expand this first override that we have created for the humidity and add another property override. And this time I'm gonna choose a custom property that we have just created, which is called shape. And I'm gonna choose, uh, let's say a triangle for the humidity to be displayed with. And then for the pressure, I can do the same thing following the same pattern. I can create a new override property, choose a shape, and this time render it as a square. So this is how, the, how powerful the declarative options API is. Let's take a look back at the code. With a matter of like a very simple code of line, we have created a very sophisticated UI that's very closely integrated with Grafana user interface. So we didn't have to write any piece of React code, anything like that. And we made sure that everything looked as good as Grafana components, because the, under the hood, the Grafana components are of course used. One last thing that I wanted to show you regarding the custom field config and the field options in general for, for the panel plugins that uh, you're gonna create is the standard options. This particular visual, visualization uses only the, the unit from the standard options, and it doesn't make much sense to have all of those additional standard properties uh, available for this particular panel. So using the use field config method, you can actually customize what standard options your panel will use. 
and you do it by specifying the standard option property. And the standard options accepts uh, an array that, that basically lists the properties that are available for your plugin. So I'm gonna use, uh, first of all, I'm gonna import field, property, field properties uh, enum from Grafana data, field config property enum from Grafana data, and then say that I'm gonna use only the unit standard property in my panel plugin. Let's save this and let's get back to Google Chrome. Let's refresh. Let's go to the field options. And as you can see, now you only see the unit picker and the custom options that you have created. So these are the declarative options. Uh, so this is the declarative options API. It allows you to create panel options editors in basically no time. It allows you to hook into the field config, field options pipeline, the underlying Grafana data pipeline with pretty much no implementation. And, and what's really cool about it is that it actually creates a user experience that is pretty much the same as Grafana user experience. The editors are using the same uh, components that we use at Grafana. So the look and feel of your plugins is, is now very, it's, it's pretty much the same as Grafana original look and feel. The declarative options API also allows you to configure the standard field options of your panel plugin and of course create the field options which are available for the overwrite, which, is, which we think is a killer feature. If you, if you want to read more about the declarative options API, please refer to the, uh, to the API reference documentation available on grafana.com slash docs. And just one more note on this, uh, declarative options API is currently available only for panel plugins, but we plan to also implement this API for data source plugin uh, coming later this year. So I have already mentioned Grafana UI earlier, uh, or what we call the Grafana design system. The work on Grafana UI began prior Grafana 6.0 and Grafana UI was announced with Grafana 6.0. Since then, the library has matured and now is also available on NPM. All plugin templates that you create with Grafana Toolkit comes with Grafana UI as a dependency, so you can start using it straight away. The components that belong to Grafana UI or Grafana design system are the same components that we use internally at Grafana to build our user interfaces. It's available online as an interactive storybook with documentation. So we can go online and play with the, the components, with the components API without actually, before you actually start working on your plugin. So the goal with the Grafana UI is to create a set of components that you can build your experiences on and that live and scale together with Grafana. Sorry for switching the, the window, wrong button. So Grafana UI, as I mentioned, is available online to, to browse as a storybook, basically an amazing open source project. So you can go to developers.grafana.com slash UI and explore what's out there in the Grafana UI package. And Grafana UI package is going to evolve into something what we call a Grafana design system. A Grafana design system is going to be basically a set of components, guidelines, documentation, examples, and much more that will allow you to build scal scalable user experiences around Grafana. Short-term future, we're gonna introduce uh, inline form styles and a better components for query editor to build query editors. We also plan to introduce 
a little bit more of the components and a little bit more of the documentation and examples uh, to what we already have in the storybook. Uh, but one of the most interesting parts of the Grafana design system work is actually are actually guidelines for building for Grafana, for building the interfaces for Grafana. So we're gonna come with some suggestions for you. What are the best practices to build Grafana interfaces? So Grafana UI was the last thing that I wanted to show you during this presentation. It's almost the last thing. But to summarize what we have just talked about. So with Grafana 7.0, we are introducing Grafana plugins platform. And the, there are, these are the parts of the Grafana plugins platform. The Grafana toolkit, a CLI for rapid plugins development. Grafana Data, a package where all the data models and data utilities that we use at Grafana are available. Grafana Runtime, Grafana Runtime services that you can hook into and use in your plugins. And last but not least, Grafana UI, Grafana Components Library that will scale into Grafana Design System in the future. But all of those libraries wouldn't be very useful if it wasn't for the documentation and the tutorials that we have created. So I want to share one last thing with you, and it's the documentation, the plugins development documentation and the Grafana tutorials, the things that we've been working hard during the 7.0 release cycle to actually make your experience with when working on Grafana plugins, plugins even better. So I'm going to switch to Chrome one more time and go to uh, docs.grafana.com. And we have added this section on the left-hand side navigation, which is called Developers. You will find all the important information about developing plugins in these sections, like what kind of plugins are there available for Grafana, how to build a log data source plugin, how to build a streaming data source plugin, etc. More, more than that, we also have API reference for the packages that we are introducing, Grafana Data, Grafana Runtime, Grafana UI, all of the APIs are documented over here. And the last thing that I've mentioned are the tutorials. Tutorials are a great way to actually learn how to build a plugin. We have a couple of tutorials that cover some of the parts of the presentation that I've, that I've just gave you. In particular, the build panel plugin and the build data source plugin will be very useful for, for the new starters with the Grafana plugins ecosystem. So you can go check it out, play with it a little bit, uh, and we are looking forward to see what you are going to build with this new uh, Grafana plugins platform. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm open for any questions uh, that you might have. As I mentioned before, we are holding a Q&A session uh, right now on the public Slack a public Grafana Slack, so feel free to join Grafana Conline channel and ask any questions that you might have uh, about plugins development. Thank you very much and take care.